Back in September of 2021, I found out about a store called Five Below, which curiously offered a display section where customers could try out their headphones. Naturally, being a $5 store chain, my expectations weren't all that high. My hunch was right, of course, but at least it made for an amusing story to tell. After all was said and done, the experience did leave me wondering. Could there actually be a pair of headphones out there that was truly beyond redemption? I spent the next few months collecting cheap headphones from various sources, then attempting to fix them with EQ by ear. This search culminated in the Magnavox Hi-Fi Stereo Headphones, a $30 Philips SHP9500 knockoff that might just be the worst headphones ever made. Still, I had always felt disappointed that I never got another chance to listen to that very first pair of Five Below headphones that got me curious in this bargain hunt in the first place. They were seemingly a casualty of the supply chain crisis, as I couldn't find them after months of visiting three different Five Below locations. Fortunately, my patience was rewarded in the long run. I present to you, for the first time ever on YouTube, a proper audiophile review of the Bass Jack Superior headphones. Why? Because even a pair of $5.25 headphones deserves a proper chance. Yeah, $5.25. So much for Five Below, right? I can only hope that extra quarter is going towards paying the employees more and not lining the pockets of greedy executives. It sure isn't going to the headphones themselves, or even the packaging for that matter. This box is clearly a downgrade from my first visit. The headphones aren't even big enough to fit inside it as is. You have to fold the ear cups upwards, which seems like a surefire way to cause some torn wires in the future. Right off the bat, the Bass Jack Superior doesn't instill much confidence. It's cheap, plasticky, the cable is as flimsy as can be, and if you look closely, one of the ear cups is actually crooked. You just gotta love how they included a sticker near the 3.5mm termination that proudly advertises Made in China! If you look closely too, you might also notice that the Bass Jack Superior seems to bear more than a passing resemblance to the Beats Studio headphones. How appalling. I suppose it's rather fitting, as it warns you about what their sound quality will be like even before you put them on. Speaking of which, while I can't exactly demonstrate this through a spoken review, I can assure you all that these headphones are just as uncomfortable to wear as they look. They have an on-ear fit with uncomfortable ear pads that put a lot of pressure on your ears. I honestly can't even wear them for more than 20 minutes at a time, though the ear pads do seem to be getting broken in the more I wear them. What about that brand name too? Bass Jacks? You mean like... Basement jacks? Boy, there's another lawsuit waiting to happen there. But enough about my various subjective impressions, you're all probably wondering how the bass jack superior actually sounds. Well, I'm sure you've already figured that out from the moment you heard the words $5 store chain. It's just complete muddy sound quality. All bass, no mids, no treble. It's not quite as muffled sounding like the $10 Sony MDR ZX110, but it's still severely lacking in audio fidelity. In my Sony MH1 review, I came up with an ingenious method for DIY audio measurements that I'm honestly shocked no one else has ever thought of. By putting the Sony MH1 in one ear and the ear cup of the bass track superior in the other, I'm able to directly compare their frequency responses using Sinalski's tone generator on two different sources normalized at 1000 Hz. Previously I had just shown some vague lists of louder and quieter frequencies, but this time I actually made my own bootleg chart using the differences in sound between the MH1 the Superior and the Sennheiser HT6XX. Take this all with a grain of salt of course. The 6XX was measured with a professional rig, while mine are subject to the effects of my own HRTF residences. As you can see on the graph, the bass and mid-range measurements aren't actually too bad. It does explain why these headphones aren't quite the worst I've ever heard. The sub-bass extension is really impressive for a $5.25 on-ear headphone, much better than the $10 Sony MDR-ZX1110 or the $100 KRK KNS6402 I reviewed last December. The 2000Hz to 3000Hz upper mids region is a bit recessed, but there are manufacturers out there who seem to like this tuning for whatever reason. It's the 4000Hz region where the serious problems begin to occur. The graph turns into a comical zigzag line of resonant peaks and dips, which is a sure sign of phase cancellation inside the ear cup enclosures. Unlike the MDR-ZX110, these headphones don't seem to have a whole lot of acoustic damping if you shine a light through the ear pad felt. 
While these DIY measurements might look flawed, they're honestly not far off from other headphone measurements I've seen. Take a look at this little comparison. I bet you're wondering what these other headphones are. Yet another Dollar General tiered Shi-Fi brand perhaps? Yeah, why don't you try the Odyssey LCD4, a $4,000 planar magnetic headphone. Of course, the stock reply that the diluted audio fools will give you is that if you just to EQ those $4,000 Mahinar magnetic headphones to fix their glaring flaws, they'll sound more perfect and higher resolution than anything else on the market. Well, what happens if you EQ the bass jack superior the same way? Shockingly enough, they also sound more perfect and higher resolution than you ever expect a $5.25 pair of headphones to. I was able to come up with an EQ curve that got a pretty much perfectly volume match to the Sony MH1. It was a bit of a struggle, as I realized on my first attempt that the added pressure from the ear cup sitting on top of the MH1 bud was causing the 8000Hz region to spike in volume. Awkwardly moving the ear cup above my ear also caused a problem with a sun bass drop 6 decibels due to the lack of seal. This final EQ preset seems to be the perfect compromise between both positions. Note that it requires a whopping negative 18.4 dB preamp, so you probably won't be able to run it off a standard jack. Even the Apple dongle requires 99% volume to get to a decent volume, and it's still not allowed enough for certain things. I tried watching Batman Mask of the Phantasm recently, and I needed to switch to my Sennheiser HD6X at 99% volume because it was so quiet. For those who watched my previous Sony MH1 review, you've probably noticed that I've gone back to using the stock LEGO Rock Raiders ear tips instead of the shorter Galaxy Buds ones. There's actually a story behind that. I was listening to a track from a PS2 game based on the anime Kenichi, The Mightiest Disciple, while I was coming up with a revised EQ preset. I noticed that the snare drums on one track were barely audible with the Sennheiser HD 6 xx and the Sony MH1 using the shorter ear tips. Using Oratory 1990's Harman Target EQ for the 6XX and switching back to the stock ear tips on the MH1 made them stand out perfectly in the track. You might be thinking this was a rather niche situation, but listening on my JBL 305P Mark II monitors confirmed that this was indeed the tuning intended by the engineers. So yeah, thank you based Manabu Namiki for finally making me hear the Sennheiser Veil. I would hate to imagine what this would sound like at Enematic Research's so-called neutral monitor in-ears with their massive dip in the treble entirely. Some of you are probably still in doubt whether the bass jack superior could be that great for a $5.25 handphone even with EQ. To be fair, those doubts are not entirely unfounded. The bass jack suffers from additional problems on top of the poor frequency response. For starters, my pair has phase inversion between the two ear cups. I don't know if this is a unit variance thing, but I definitely hear it on my own pair. Fortunately, there are ways to fix this. The permanent solution is to open up one of the drivers and switch the polarity on them by resoldering the wires in place. An even easier solution is to just create an impulse response wave where one of the channels is phase inverted, then load it into equalizer APO. A cheap driver wouldn't be complete without distortion, and the bass jack superior is no exception. It has distortion that is very much audible between the left and right drivers in three separate regions. In addition, it has noticeably poor driver matching, where certain frequencies will be a bit louder in either the left or right driver. These are definite disqualifiers for anyone considering the purchase of a so-called audiophile headphone. Why is it, then, that I still recommend my viewers to try the bass jack superior with my EQ? Well, it's because when you get down to it, these objective flaws don't amount to much in practical use terms. Any distortions heard in the science sweep get masked when you're listening to music. The poor driver matching is also something your brain can automatically adjust to. After a few days listening to the EQ'd bass jacks appear and then going back to the Sennheiser HD6XX or Sony MH1, I honestly couldn't even tell the difference in sound quality. They really did sound that close. Even the HRTF performance in gaming was on par with expensive headphones I've owned in the past. Besides, if audible distortion was actually something that immediately disqualified audio gear for consideration, then that would immediately put the Edematic Research ER4SR out of the question. In Sign Sweeps, I clearly heard audible distortions between 200Hz and 700Hz. I can only imagine the effect would be even more obvious on the ER4XR with its increased bass levels. In conclusion, it's nice to note that the awful 5 Below headphones which originally led me down this path of experimentation with alleged lo-fi gear could in fact sound hi-fi themselves with enough hard work and dedication. At the end of the day, 
headphones are essentially just magnets, and there's no real resolution or technicalities to magnets or the vibrations in the air that they produce. I'm sure there are people out there who are disappointed I didn't cover the inline microphone, and I am sorry that my setup does not permit recording this. To anybody who's watched this far, I implore you to stay tuned, as I have more cheapo headphones reviews in the works. I already have a new pair of Dollar Tree headphones to analyze, and I'm very curious about the Tripo and Leia, which looks to be a worthy MH1 successor judging by Critical's measurements. Thank you all for watching. Mm -hmm.